from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell and I'm in Melbourne, still following and commentating on the Ashes series, but doing it off tube from studio just because of the COVID rates uh, in and around the Ashes series, a lot of COVID positive tests amongst broadcast media. I've managed to steer clear of it so far, so crossing fingers and hope that it stays that way. But, well, the series 3-0, the Ashes are gone, but England march on trying to get something out of the remaining two matches. Well, we've had a bit of sustenance here in Sydney. It's Jim Maxwell in the ABC box at the SCG. And England have fought pretty well so far in this game. Now it's a question of what their batsmen can do against the Australian bowling. And the only other factor that's uh, likely to disrupt this match is, of course, the fickle weather of Sydney. Well, there's a little bit of weather in Joburg as well, where India are uh, now going through their second test against South Africa. And that's very delicately poised. But uh, hello, everybody. I'm Charu Sharma for All India Radio. Having returned to Bangalore after a quick trip to Coorg, where on our coffee estate, it's time for picking. So uh, it'll require a few more trips. But a terrific series in South Africa, unlike the one that is going on in Australia. I tell you what, we have to start by reflecting on what has been one of Test Cricket's greatest upsets. There's a lot of very good Test Cricket going on around at the moment. But I don't think anybody predicted this result, which was Bangladesh's men shocking the cricket world in quite a wonderful way, beating the reigning World Test Champions at New Zealand in their own backyard. The first time Bangladesh had beaten New Zealand in any form of cricket. And they won by eight wickets in the opening test at Mount Monganui. Quite an achievement. And other than victories over Zimbabwe, it's Bangladesh's first test victory since 2018 when they beat the West Indies. Added to that, it's the first test that New Zealand have lost at home since March 2017, when they lost out to South Africa. Well, how has this victory gone down back in Bangladesh? I'm pleased to say that we are joined by former Bangladesh opener, Sharia Nafis. Just give us a bit of context about just how significant the win is for Bangladesh and then the way it's been received at home. It's uh, massive. It's a brilliant win. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks to Allah for uh, granting us uh, to win the match. Secondly, all credit goes to the players who they have fought hard. They have uh, played brilliant cricket for five days and won the match for Bangladesh. For me, this is the biggest win uh, for Bangladesh cricket team uh, for quite a few reasons. First of all, we have been a strong side at home. We have winning. We have been winning tests, one day T20s at home. Uh, in one day cricket, yes, we have some success, but you know, as a test playing nation, uh, it has to be the ultimate game. You have to win test matches. And uh, recently, in uh, just two, three, four months, Bangladesh team has uh, been uh, has gone through a lot of criticism, uh, especially for the T20 World Cup. In this context, you go to New Zealand, uh, where they have been unbeaten for five years, 17 test matches, world test champion. You go to their backyard, you dominate the game for five days, you bat out bat them, you out bowl them, you outfield them, win the test match. I think nothing can get better than that. And we are really proud. Can you tell us a little bit more about the impact this will have on the Bangladesh nation? Just not just cricket, but the whole country. Cricket has been uh, the biggest event in Bangladesh for such a long time. You know, when it's about cricket, there's no race, there's no politics, there's nothing. Everyone unites under cricket. I think it has a very big, it will have a very big impact on Bangladesh cricket. As a test playing nation, you need to win test matches. And uh, it doesn't matter you are winning T20s or you know, one days, everyone will judge you how you are doing in test matches. And what a place to start with New Zealand. I'm um, seriously speaking, this will help Bangladesh cricket grow in a big manner because you know sometimes what happens if you uh, look back James when we won against Australia in 2005 England that had a huge impact on Bangladesh cricket and we went to 2007 World Cup and uh, played the second round you know if you look back in 2015 we were in the quarterfinals 2017 we were in the Champions League semi-finals so these kind of matches are kind of footstep for you to go upwards and I'm pretty sure and I truly believe this will give Bangladesh the positive momentum that Bangladesh needed. And uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the boys will grab it in both hands. 
Well, congratulations once again, uh, Sharia. This is Charu Sharma from Bangalore. Yeah. Let's talk about the next, perhaps the next big star on the horizon, Ibadat Hussain. Now, he got, what, seven for 121. <laughs> and uh, he's a very proud Air Force man, made his debut a short while back. Are we talking about the next big star? Is he, is he an inspirational figure? I'm sure you know him well. After the performance he pulled, uh, he, he should be. You know, Ibadat has been playing test matches for Bangladesh for the last two years. He took a lot of criticism that he was not picking enough wickets, uh, whether he should be playing or not. There was a lot of debate going on. But, uh, you know, this guy, he has pace. Uh, Ibadat can bowl 140 plus all day long. So that was his, um, that was his uh, plus point. And I'm, I'm very glad that he has bowled into the right areas. The coaches has put a lot of effort behind him. As he said in his interview, we came here, we had a mission and we wanted to uh, motivate the next generation. My word, the way he has motivated the next, uh, uh, next batch of players, that's, uh, it, it cannot get better than that. Sharia, thank you so much for joining us on Stump. That is Sharia Nafis, former Bangladesh opener, reveling in their victory over New Zealand. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on ABC and All India Radio. Now next on Stumped, the men's ashes action. Let's speak about matters on the field at the SCG because, yep, sure enough, the weather did take a lot of time out on the first day before Australia declared late on the second at eight for 416 and the openers for England survived just to the close to go into day three. Of the day, day two was marked by an absolutely heartwarming hundred from Australia's Usman Khawaja, a man Jim only drafted back into the side due to the fact that Travis Head, the incumbent number five, tested positive for COVID. So yet another Australian who has taken an opportunity immediately. Well, he's 35. It's uh, three years since he scored 100 for Australia. It's three years since he played for Australia during that Ashes series in 2019. And it was between Travis Head and Usman Khawaja for the spot for the first test. He'd got a head start, made 100. Uh, the interesting thing now that Kawaja's done what he's done and, and, and done it in a very cool, calm way, what happens next? Does he stay in the side? Do they, in fact, drop Cameron Green, who hasn't come up as a batsman, although he's bowled quite well? They've got a few decisions to make, just as they've had to make around their bowling attack. There's a rosy side to all this because the, the depth with batting and, and bowling is such that uh, Australia appears to be in good shape. But good on Usman Kawaja. He's ninth test century, so that's quite a record. Now, as much as the Ashes has been hitting the headlines in recent weeks, there is a very significant test series taking place in South Africa as well, with the second test against India climaxing in, in rather an intriguing way. And uh, at the time of speaking right now, South Africa going to the fourth day, needing 122 to win. Uh, that second test in Johannesburg and level the series, whilst India need eight wickets to win. So it's tantalisingly set up, Charu. Now, India are without Virat Kohli. Their captain was ruled out with a back spasm. So K.O. Rahul's the stand-in skipper, top scoring. Uh, he got 50 when they were bowled out for 202. But South Africa struggled with the bat as well. They only got a 27-run lead uh, into the second innings when they were bowled out for 229. And what about Shardul Thakur? Because he got seven oh. for 61. Best figures by an Indian bowler in South Africa and joint best by any overseas bowler over there. I mean, he's just been fabulous, hasn't he? Brilliant. Tarzan can do no wrong. Not just with the mm -hmm. ball, but with the bat too. He, he went out, he was pretty aggressive, made a big difference for that little cameo of his. So his confidence is fabulous. And to think that he can't get a regular place in the Indian side is, is uh, you know, the mind boggles. It's just nice to have that, uh, you know, somebody who can step in as a genuine all-rounder. And, and he's a hard boy cricketer, came up the hard way in Mumbai. And, and uh, I don't think he's going to take his success, you know, wrongly as it were. I mean, he, he's also not particularly young. So he's got a nice, solid cricketing mind uh, on his shoulder, a brain. Had he failed here in bowling conditions... He might not have become somebody you talk about a regular place in the Indian cricket team. Now, perhaps it'll be very difficult to leave him, uh, at least out of the, the top 15, 18 players in the country. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on ABC and All India Radio. Finally on Stumped, we'll go from one ashes to another as we head over to the volcanic island of Iceland and the aptly named Volcanic Ashes. 
Now, this is a competition which is back after a year, a year of absence due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's an indoor winter tournament with the teams competing for a very special prize. To tell us more about it, we can welcome the chair of the Icelandic Cricket Association, Bala Kamalakaran, to Stumped. Bala, welcome. Tell us a little bit more about the background to this volcanic ashes. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Iceland, um, of course, we have a history that Iceland has played cricket in the year 911, we have record of it from the sagas, but uh, it was a ragtag group of us who started playing about 10 years back. Uh, the volcanic ashes uh, started uh, about two, three years ago when we uh, had enough teams to, to play the, the sport. Uh, now we have over uh, four teams uh, locally and uh, we have three tournaments. And of course, we are just in the first mile of a marathon and we are building a lot of things around it, a youth program, uh, women's cricket and so on and so forth. So I think uh, for the first time, we can actually see right in front of our eyes how a sport is built in a country. So the tournament is called the Volcanic Ashes. Describe what the trophy looks like. Well, actually, uh, we do have the, the new volcano that just came out <laughs> Uh, about uh, a year back and we have uh, we have we're probably the only country where we can get new ash every time we play the tournament <laughs> so you've got real ash uh, yeah we, we, we actually we actually went city. to the volcanic site and we actually do have a remnant of a volcano and that is what is uh, given out as a trophy so, so what what is this ash in is it like a silver trophy or no it's just a rock with a, with a with a plate on it so it's a piece of volcanic ash like granite. Yes. And that's presented. Yes. I, I like it. I mean, there's a lot of fancy cricket trophies around the world. I particularly <laughs> like that one. No, Jim. no, no. You, know, you don't get much fancier than this because uh, it's how <laughs> nature made it. Bella, hello. It's Jim Maxwell in, in Sydney. Uh, I'm, Hi, I've been to Iceland and it's a pretty short summer from recollection. So tell us a bit more about the cricket scene in Iceland. Have you had much interest from the locals? Wanting to play the game? Yes, uh, the summer season in Iceland is about four and a half months, but we have the advantage of uh, 24 hour lighting. So we get to play a lot longer during the day. So we don't stop uh, from uh, nine to uh, five. We usually play from nine to nine. So that's uh, that kind of is like uh, maybe another month you could add to the season. Iceland sport has been uh, getting a lot more popular in Iceland, primarily because uh, one, we have a lot more expats who have moved into Iceland, uh, a lot of new industries that are being built, people from India, from South Africa, from uh, New Zealand, Australia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan have uh, moved in. Uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, a number of refugees who have moved in from Afghanistan and other wash African areas who are cricketers. And we actually see this as a cricket as a very good platform to integrate some of those people into uh, the Icelandic uh, community because they get to uh, participate in a sport for, with those of us who have been here long enough and they get connections and networks as well. So uh, the sport is getting a lot more popular. We now have a dedicated uh, home of cricket. Uh, we play in Vidastatun, which is uh, a ground in, in a town of Hafnafjordur. Uh, the Prime Minister of Iceland came and inaugurated the ground and, and we play there and we are building infrastructure. And while we play, uh, we start to see uh, curious Icelanders stop by while they're walking and they start asking what this is. Icelanders are uh, quite well uh, worldly. They've traveled a lot. They've been to Australia. A lot of my friends actually have watched cricket in Australia. And uh, they, they're they really fondly looking for us to start uh, the tradition of uh, a barbecue and uh, drinking <laughs> beer and watching the sport. So, so those are some of the plans that we have uh, as we build the sport in Iceland. You know, you talk about 50, 100 people, 1,000. They're big numbers for a small country. But to be able to get international status from the ICC, I can't even begin to understand what a big challenge that must be for you. Absolutely. We want Iceland to become a cricket playing nation. Uh, our big uh, vision document that we wrote down was in the next 10 years, Iceland will uh, be competing in the international stage. 
And I think that is a very doable uh, challenge. So we've started on that journey. And uh, the big challenge uh, initially when we started was just enough people, uh, you know, just having more people to play the sport. And uh, we have solved that problem now. And now we're starting to build up infrastructure. Now we have a home for cricket. So we're starting to build some of the things that we need to have, you know, basic stuff, you know, uh, proper pitches, uh, you know, uh, obviously we have regular games now that uh, changes everything. And uh, we're getting a lot of support from the local uh, community. And uh, last but not least, end of the day, uh, it all comes down to resources. And uh, we, are, we, we actually solved that problem last year. We got the first corporate sponsor, uh, a very big biotech company in Iceland called Alvertech has uh, sponsored one of the teams and uh, a number of the players that have joined us are uh, from that uh, company. So we are actually looking to get more corporates involved in the sport of cricket in Iceland. It's new for Iceland, but uh, as, as you uh, know, nobody expected Iceland to do anything in the game of football, but uh, you know, they proved uh, a lot of people wrong in the last couple of years. Uh, and I think um, uh, size usually doesn't matter. What really matters is the 11 players on the field and uh, what they do on the field. I think we have a pretty good chance to, you know, build a kind of an underdog team that can actually go and stand its own in any place. Let's hope so. Let's yeah. hope so, Bala. It's fascinating to speak to you and, and hear the story. Thank you for sharing it with us. And let's hope any bad weather stays away from the volcanic ashes and, and you can complete it all. Thanks so much for being with us on Stump. Thanks so much. Uh, nice meeting you all. And, uh, you know, and as we say from Iceland, you know, you've seen nothing yet. <laughs> that is a good <laughs> mantra. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's Stumped here on All India Radio. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter. We're at BBC WS Sport. Make sure you use the hashtag BBC Stumped. And check us out on YouTube as well. Go to BBC World Service on YouTube. My thanks to Cherry Sharma and Jim Maxwell and to you for listening. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Stumped is a BBC Sport production for the BBC World Service in association with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and All India Radio.